Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be now and always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Words from the Gospel read, Matthew's Gospel, the 7th chapter, the 5th and the 6th verses. While he, Peter was still speaking, Suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. And after the semicolon it says, Listen to him. I have entitled my sermon this morning a call. To listen to Jesus, a call to listen to Jesus. Peter was a consummate talker. He could talk from morning till night, even in his sleep. He was a preacher. And as can be discerned from our gospel text, Peter is in the midst of a theophany. That is a manifestation or revelation from God. In this moment of manifestation, in this moment of revelation, Peter was confronted with two of the most revered persons in Old Testament history. He saw the one who was the symbol of the law. And who was that? And the congregation stayed silent. That's a legitimate question. And who was that? Moses. And the one who was the symbol of authentic prophetic ministry. And who was that? Elijah. What we know from our text this morning is that Peter, in his semi-conscious state, was feeling good with what he was experiencing. He felt so good with what he was experiencing that he wanted to build a three-room hotel to contain the icons of divine presence upon the mountain top. He wanted to create an institution for posterity. At a glance, what Peter was saying sounded good until God shut him up with a more profound and emphatic manifestation. One writer says, prior to the resurrection of Jesus, no appearance of our Lord so completely displays the truth about him. This was a profound experience for Peter, and he was almost talking gibberish. You know what I'm talking about. He was in a very kind of ecstatic moment. So then before Peter could make a fool of himself, God stepped in and once again identified the one who came to us at Christmas as Emmanuel. The one who at his baptism was declared beloved. The one who now today is still Oh, beloved, but the community of faith then, the community around them then and us now, have been given the mandate to listen to him, a call to listen to Jesus. So I say to you this morning, uh, Peter did not have the last word, God did. And always 
does. And what God's counsel is to us this morning, He wants us to listen to and for Jesus. Why must we listen to Jesus, the beloved? I can think of a million reasons, but I will share two with you this morning. A million maybe too many for our appetite this morning. Firstly, we must listen to Jesus because he is the summation of all the law and the prophets. He is, as the hymn writer says, the thumb of every blessing. He is the new law by which all life must be lived. As prophet, out of his mouth, he spoke only the truth of God with mercy, with love, and compassion. That is why he could say in John's Gospel, the 10th chapter and the 30th verse, I am the Father are one. In essence, Jesus' work authenticates God's work. And because that is so, He is God. Again, John tells us in John 15, the fifth verse, that He is the vine and we are the branches for apart from me Jesus you can do nothing so if we are to do anything right if we are to accomplish anything profound we must do it in and through the name of Jesus as we seek to follow the pilgrim's way that is why St. Paul to say in all of his journeys, in all of his trials, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So God says today, listen to Jesus. Secondly, we must listen to Jesus because his words are the only words that make sense in season and out of season. If we affirm his words as a lantern unto our feet and a light to our power, says the psalmist in Psalm 119, verses, verse 105. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our paths in good times and in times of chaos. And that is why I sing and can sing in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. Clearly, the world is in a state of panic. People of Asian descent are under attack because of the coronavirus. Everybody looks at them and point a finger. And they ask, when last have you gone to a Chinese restaurant? I'm just asking. Uncertainty and insecurity trouble our nation as we see the actions of a dictator or chief law enforcement officer. The church, which cannot escape these realities, is also in many ways experiencing our own struggles across faith traditions, declining numbers and insufficient funds. The safety net 
for people living in poverty is being eroded and people are living with fearful hearts. But there is good news for these local, national and worldwide conditions are marching us to a different global reality in this 21st century. But in all of this, my brothers and sisters, the only sure voice to hear and heed is not Bernie Sanders or Vladimir Putin. The voice we need to hear is that of God in Christ Jesus who says, as he said to the disciples with the force of divine glory, do not be afraid. It is this voice from which Peter testifies in today's second reading as an authentic witness to the truth of the transfiguration, helping us to know that Jesus loves and wants to lift us up. Yes, Jesus' touch and love can lift us if we spend enough time listening to him in this frantic and chaotic world. If we spend enough time not allowing the dictates of this momentary barrenness to cause us to lose hope. Yes, and knowing that when we look up as the disciples did on that mount of transfiguration, if we look up and if we believe the gospel reminds us that we will see Jesus. He will be there for you and for me. That's why the psalm bids us give me Jesus. For the psalmist is right. Happy are they all who take refuge in him. This happiness is not about money or material wealth, but it is about what the Greek calls irony. Peace of mind. It's happiness that wells up from the inside, whether you have a million dollars or you are a dollar. Whether you are a millionaire or a dollar, you get my point. That happiness does not come from money or faith. It comes from an interior life that tells us whatever is happening, give me Jesus. My prayer for all of us this morning is that as we leave this season, of epiphany in which God sought to demonstrate to us that Jesus is his beloved son and interlink those 40 days of introspection and examination that we will need these words of Peter when he says you will do well to be attentive to this, meaning the truth of Jesus' divine identity, meaning the call to listen to Jesus as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your heart. In this part, I have provided 
many opportunities for us to listen to Jesus. As we engage in this journey of Lent, Bible study, worship services, May we truly make every effort to hear and heed the voice of God in Christ Jesus now and always. Amen. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, describe the wisdom and power now and for all. Please join the choir in singing Levi's number 91. Give me.